Hello, it's Jimmy here already. So I have here a Vauxhall Vivaro 2014. Okay, inside the vehicle we have check injection fault, spanner light, and engine management light there. Okay, I'm going to use my new scan tool here, which is the X431 Euro from Launch. That's automotive diagnostic. Choose Opel or Opel EV. Hit diagnostic. Then we can do a health report. Okay, we've got a P2002 particle filter low efficiency P2263 22 turbocharger boost performance. Engine oil life exceeded. And we have particle filter again, so the dash 91. Now, all of these faults have been fixed apparently by a mechanic a few times, but within two miles, all of this comes back. So, the oil has been changed. Two miles later, this light comes back on. Um, I think the main issue here is going to be you see, what I'm booked in for is a deep look at the DPF, but the DPF isn't going to be the main issue here, it's going to be this turbocharger boost performance so if we go to enter we'll have a look at some live data data stream and we'll look for boost pressure manifold pressure ok it doesn't have that uh, di pressure sensor that's the voltage one that one soot accumulation ok let's change these over to something I'm familiar with which is melee bars of HPA 1007 72 grams of soot. Let's switch that off. Ignition on, we should have sort of a 1015. Yep, roughly there. This one, we're not getting, we're getting negative readings on, so let's start the engine again. Let's see if we, if we hold up the revs. Let's see, we're getting fluctuation on the voltage. sensor doesn't seem to be responding okay so we've got the bonnet open uh, just having a quick look around here we can see we've got sort of wetness around here don't know if that's a boost leak or is it just coming from the uh, power steering pump or something like that we've got a power steering pump just there it looks sort of wet around that area but it could be coming from one of these boost hoses here so we're gonna connect up a smoke machine and see if we can put some pressure through it and find any leaks hopefully it's just a leak that means he hasn't got any expensive repairs on that side of the turbo okay so another tool here from launch which is the smoke tester this is called the smoke one so you can get bigger models with the smoke two i think the smoke two is a little bit better to be honest so i've just got that connected to my boost pack because i can't seem to find any 12 volt hookup points on the front of this van so we've got it connected to a boost pack we're going to connect it to the intake there and we'll just see if getting some smoke push through like that so this is where I'm going to be looking around this sort of area I'd say it's coming from here this pipe We'll know in a minute. So yeah, just as I expected there, we got a leak from this pipe. 
So it turns out this clamp is loose. So just gonna tighten that up a little bit. Not too much, we don't wanna break the um, clip there. They're not that strong, but the smoke machine is still running. And that seems to have fixed that. All we've done is literally tighten it up. Now that was quite a big leak really and this is it's only on very low pressure so when the engine is actually running the turbo is running you're going to have a, a lot bigger leak than that because that's just pushing through a small amount of pressure if we have the engine running you're going to have a much larger amount of pressure going through there Let's see there's a little bit of pressure there but not much that just goes in the intake okay i've got the vehicle now raised up because i'm going to get underneath to check the DPF so what I'm gonna do now is just check the actual tailpipe of the DPF which is clean and a better view there of that see that spotless clean there's no soot in there at all so the reason I'm checking that is obviously the P2002 low efficiency of the DPF can mean the DPF pressure is too low which could mean the DPF cracked but it's not the case here so just up there we have the DPF pressure sensor. I've just moved that hose a little bit to the left so you can see there. But it's just up there. Okay, so what I've done is disconnected the hose from the pressure sensor and we've left that connected there. So I just want to do some tests on it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with these, because what Vauxhall's anything with the Renault Vauxhall system on it, this is actually a Renault, so what these Renaults will do is that once you've got a fault code logged for the DPF a lot of them will just cut off the DPF pressure sensor so what I'm going to do is now clear these fault codes then we're going to go back and look at the live data see have we got a reading from it I'm going to have to go back in and just connect the DPF pressure sensor back on while I do that Okay, so we've just connected the pressure sensor back to the vehicle there. Okay, now I'm going to come back to data stream. Look for the DPF differential pressure. It's only got a single hose on it, so it's not actually a differential pressure sensor. It's just a DPF pressure sensor, you'd call it. Okay, so we're still reading the minus 32. You can see now with the ignition off versus with the engine on voltage change in the DPF pressure sensor there okay so I've removed the DPF pressure sensor okay now I've fitted a new sensor on it what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have to read the fault codes again because it's probably gonna show circuit error for that now No, it hasn't. So we're just going to clear the fault codes again. Okay, so we still have the reading on that, which is after the pressure sensor was fitted. I've fitted a replacement one, and we have got voltage at the sensor. So at the wire. Um, just going to show you something now, which can be confusing might send us away to an, an electrician or try and spend a lot more hours on the electrical system but for some reason I always check these as a Vauxhall and a Renault now for some reason the Opel system doesn't seem to be reading right so if we go in as a Renault now this comes up as a Renault Traffic 2 and if we look at the ECM data stream we're going to look at the same information differential pressure soot now on this one we also get the manifold pressure up which is a bit more helpful and you can get the boost boost pressure Now you can see we have 72 grams of soot, 57 millibars of pressure, 
we've got a 1005 on the manifold pressure ignition off we've got similar readings on both the boost pressure manifold pressure particle pressure now goes to zero and of course if we start it up we have around 57 millibars of pressure if we hold the engine up to 3000 rpm We have about 350 millibars. Okay, so what I've done is like a pedal reset, holding the braking revs to reset the oil. Let's just check if that's been reset. Oh, it hasn't. We'll have to try that again. Let that focus. Okay, so a quick little test drive around the block there. Pressure now has actually increased up to 107, and it's maxed out at 80 grams of soot. See the temperature is a little bit high there because we were just giving it a few revs. We've got injection fault back, and again, this is the fault that we have. Okay, so I have managed to reset the oil dilution fault, we're just trying a couple of more times to reset that. I have taken it on a couple of miles as well, um, just test drive around the block there just to make sure that the oil dilution has cleared. Now you see, if we can't clear the oil dilution fault. The DPF won't regenerate on its own, so I'd be wasting my time cleaning it because within a short time it would be back with a block DPF. Now, the one thing I will mention as well is, is that it just shows the importance of where I've mentioned in loads of my previous videos about checking these vans under the Renault system as well as the Vauxhall or Opel system because I've always said that the Opel system isn't very very reliable on these um, and the, the Renault system is much better and that just proves the point there. Okay, so I've now injected the DPF cleaning fluid into the vehicle there through the same holes that the pressure sensor connects to okay now we're back in the vehicle we're gonna hold it up around sort of 3000 rpm and we'll see that pressure come down let me just get the engine speed as well there Come down to 20 grams from 80. It seems to have evened out there though. Looks like it's coming down nicely. I was a bit sceptical whether or not it was going to work because we have got 170,000 miles on this van. But it seems to be coming down okay. The tolerance with these vans is very, very small. It's got to come down sort of usually below 6 millibars of pressure. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're going to do just a couple of more miles to make sure that the vehicle is running right okay test drive done five millibars of pressure five grams of soot now which is very good okay so this vehicle is now really all sorted and it's important that um, sometimes I don't make it clear what the problem was and the resolution here the main issue that caused all of these faults I would say was the loose boost holes that was causing obviously low boost pressure uh, once you get that fault triggered off very quickly your, your your DPF will start to block up. Now, before we started this, if we reset the codes and drove it 100 yards, the fault codes would come back. Oil dilution and boost pressure and DPF. So all of those faults are now cleared. And of course, we just confirmed that before we finish up the job. So that's it, all finished on this one, and see you on the next video.